Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 144. I think it's 144. Hang on. Hey, look at that. It's 144. Where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. So let's get right to it. The first one's called, NASA just announced it will allow private citizens to fly to the ISS. Mark, boy, do we have them running. Hope all is well. Flat Earth dot life. And that's from John McCaffrey. Thank you, John. And yeah, that no private citizens are going up there anytime soon. I mean, come on, 90, what was it? 97% of all the people that are up there were United States military. Almost all of them were Air Force. So yeah, a private citizen. And and I'm sorry, who who's going to get chosen for this? And do they have to pay out of pocket? No, come on. They've always, they've always said, oh yeah, if you pay X number of millions of dollars, we'll take you up there. And to date, I don't know of anyone that went that wasn't tied to the military in some way, shape, or form. Jared did a wonderful video on that uh, a couple of years ago. This one's called Watch This Video, Mark. Okay, so I will click on the link. And it goes to What If We Could Control the Climate by What If. Uh, and with 1.4 million subscribers published on June 7th. All right, I will take a look. So thank you for that. This one's called Brexit. Mark, are you in the NSA? Because your last name, Sergeant, has the letters NSA in it. I don't know if that's serious or not. That's from a guy named uh, Fraser McIntosh. I, are you kidding? Sergeant has... Uh, it has a lot of common <laughs> s-a-r-g-e-n-t do you know how many words you could spell with with just that i mean sergeant is an excellent scrabble thing although i will say this the only word if you use scrabble the only word that you can turn sergeant into is strange think about it and most people don't get it including me i didn't even know until i was much much older uh when i was in high school i would assign my my high school annuals completely differently uh, because sergeant is two syllables and strange is one, even though it's kind of a long one. Anyway, moving on. This one's called traveling around or along Antarctica. Mark, I viewed most of your videos. There is some very compelling evidence out there to back up your case. The official story of the Apollo moon landing doesn't do a great job. I agree. And using all the dodgy material and statements of that trip is certainly advantageous to your theory but i have one remaining question can't find the question anywhere let alone the answer sailing around antarctica would be a trip of at least uh, almost eighteen thousand kilometers there's a map that has been used here uh <clears throat> excuse me this seems on scale of course the ice is growing and breaking off but let's say the trip will be eighteen thousand five hundred kilometers with the coastline of antarctica in sight at all times okay Sailing around has a record of 102 days, and that sounds plausible too, given the distance. Sailing 180 kilometers per day is a steady 7.5 kilometers per hour, is an average of four knots, and that is surely doable in a modern sailing boat. But now the shoreline of the FE model, now we're not sailing around Antarctica, but only along the coastline in a circle. This trip is, trip is much longer. According to this map, the estimated distance will be much longer. The distance from the coastline of Antarctica to the North Pole is an average of 18,000 kilometers. So traveling a circle in this diameter would be about 6 point blah, 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 times 18,000 or 113,000 kilometers. That is equals six times longer. Yeah, that's about right. Surely all those sailing trips around Antarctica would be then six times longer than expected. Either those boats are six times faster or they lied about the length of the trip. That was more uh, the two years instead of 100 days if the earth is not flat. Can you shine a light on this one? Yeah, okay, first off, and, and I treat this no different than I do the plane flights, show me the coordinates. Show me the latitude and longitude coordinates of this sailboat trip. I need to know exactly. Uh, because with, with the plane flights, remember they disappear off the GPS system. The GPS system tells you not only where you want to go, but where it wants you to go. And if the GPS system can't track planes at all in the in the outer rim, anywhere below the equator, 
on a, on a globe map, then what are we doing with boats? Tell me the latitude and longitude coordinates. And I got this question actually from a guy down in um, New Zealand when I was down there at the conference. And he's going, no, I, 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 he goes, I, I've sailed, well, I don't know if he said he sailed around Antarctica, but he sailed near Antarctica. And but he said he knew lots of sailboat guys that uh, that have taken you know they've got a trip that but sh again show me that show me the route that's the big thing it's not that I don't that I let me rephrase this it's not that I disagree with the plane flights entirely uh, very possible I'm not saying they don't exist I'm saying show me the the coordinates because when you try to get the course the latitude and longitude coordinates drop off and they go into approximated mode which means they have absolutely no idea where it is if, if it's a 32 satellite multiple coverage blanket coverage overlapping uh spread for those satellites then you should never ever lose anything out there and we always do but thank you for the question and i've gotten it for a long time and i don't mind answering it this one's called number 15 is odd check out oh i'm sorry odd uh let's see random facts list okay so the facts republic dot com 50 random facts list 20 okay so let me go down to 15 uh let's see 15 10 11 12 13 14 15 many people who believe in the flat earth theory also believe that flat top mountains are actually giant tree stumps hmm actually there are i don't know many people but yeah the it was a video that came out uh, two years ago at least that was called no forests on F flat earth and it was very interesting because the people were saying uh, maces were basically just chopped down trees. And I don't, I don't hate the idea. Look, I'm, I'm in flat earth, so I'm open to a lot of ideas. And if you were terraforming this world when you're first starting, w why wouldn't you make it bigger? Why wouldn't you start out with l giant things and make them smaller and smaller? It's what we do with everything, especially electronics. We love shrinking things down, taking a big idea and making it smaller and smaller and smaller to where now we can make what, what iPods, you can make them so small, they're basically unusable. I mean, you, the, the, the headphone, we can make them a base, basically just a tiny bit bigger than the headphone jack. The only reason they're, they're just the size of a, a pack of matches now is because if it was any smaller, you, you wouldn't be able to manipulate it with your thumb. So thanks. That's really cool. I, I, I like that it's actually on the list. Flat Earth is everywhere. This one's called Forgotten Interview. Mark, I don't remember seeing or at least hearing the audio of this interview on your channel. Oh, where did I put this one? Give me a second. Oh yeah, the Mark Sargent interview from Live for Truth. Yeah, I, it's not on my channel because I didn't record it on site and the guy um, f from Live for Truth, which I met, that was up in the Calgary conference, he didn't send me a thing when he posted it. So thank you for catching it. And yes, then I downloaded it and mirrored it on my channel. This one is called the Subject Matter Experts. Hi Mark, I really miss your Subject Matter Expert interviews. Any way you can organize that for us again? Thanks in advance. Cheers, Allison from Canada. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember with me, it's it's got to be unsolicited. So, um, I mean, I'm meaning I'm not going to reach out to people who I don't have no idea who to reach out to in terms of this. So, everybody on the subject matter list, if you guys haven't checked it out already, it's uh, subject matter expert testimony shows. It's a playlist on my on my YouTube channel. Uh, easy to find. Um. <clears throat> Have you know? It, I, whoever contacts me, I will listen to them and maybe record it, and maybe not. But we we've got a big list out there so far, and I appreciate everybody that, that's contacted me in regards to this. And hopefully, we'll get some more in the future. I just don't don't know. I mean, every week is a weird week, and and I never can predict what's going to happen. This one's called Truth Quest Calgary Flat Earth Coin Pick. Good day, Mark. Darren Bliss here. Great meeting you at TruthQuest Calgary. I hope the Organite helps keep away negative vibes. I noticed the pic I took of your coin and had some curious specular highlights from the flash. Included our picks. Hope to again chat one day. Hail Hydra. Peace out. You know what? I'm going to download those to my machine right now because I hadn't before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shouldn't have had lunch just before I did this. And we'll extract and let me take a quick look at these yeah yeah some good shots thank you for that awesome that's from dude face 
This one's called Flat Earth. And request timed out. That's lovely. Come on. Okay. Hi, Mark. I hope you're well. I just want to say you're doing a great job. I respect you and feel glad. I know there is a Flat Earth soldier out, like, uh, out there like you, but I have a but. I really think you would do way better and convince more people if you studied the Bible. Forgive me if you already have or if you currently are, but shows I've seen you on when you answer a question with uncertainty at points and certain questions you show flaws because you leave it open or give two answers. Maybe there's no punctuation in this letter whatsoever, by the way. For an atheist and for someone spiritual where... If you were a Christian or not necessarily Christian, but knew the Bible, you would be able to give a definite and more confident answer knowing the Bible says so. I'm serious. There's no punctuation in this. I'm going to run out of breath um, because the Bible backs the flat earth real well. Yet you debate with Christians who believe the Bible and think the earth is a globe. You could use the Bible to humble them as well. With me, I do not argue with God's word. So if God says he is above the circle of the earth, Isaiah 40, 22, so be it. And if he says hell is bottomless and the stars are inside the firmament and the earth is placed immovable, so be it on one of your shows. You left the question open. Absolutely no punctuation. Uh, <clears throat> about there being a creator, surely the flat earth proves there is a God as the firmament was created and put there as the Bible says and two great lights under it. I'm under it all I'm saying is back up flat earth with the Bible more if you can because most flat earths come to God because the flat earth are all or already believe the earth is flat because of the Bible. <laughs> oh my God. And it stops the confusions and divisions between communities. If we believe what has already been given in us in, there's no paragraph breaks either. I'm sorry. I'm getting lost. And God's word, an ancient text in the first place, Period. That was all one sentence. And this, the second part is just one sentence. Ready? In the Bible, Revelations 4, 6, and Revelations 15, 2, and many more speak of the firmament as being a sea of glass and water is above it as also has gates as when, <clears throat> excuse me, the earth was flooded. God said the gates of heaven were opened and that's where all the water came from. Genesis explains the flat earth from when it was created. Oh, I'm sorry. There is another period in there. Keep up the work, bro. Let me know if you would incorporate it more because when it gets technical, the Bible makes it easy to understand. That's from Adrian. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, it's much appreciated. Wish you would have included more uh, periods there or, or paragraph breaks or anything, but but that's fine. We'll, you know, I'm going to let it slide. Uh, let's see here. This one's called Just for Fun. Hi, Mark. I was taking pictures of my exercise ball and wondering what it might have in common with the moon when I noticed it is resting on my globe. That made me laugh, and then you came to mind. By the way, I don't drink, but go to the liquor store to get some boxes. <laughs> you can share this photo if you wish. Have a sunshiny day uh, or moonshiny day, and that's from Anne. Oh, that's nice. And No, I wouldn't have judged you just because you had boxes full of magazines or something that uh, had alcohol on the side. No, lots of people go to the liquor store to get boxes. That's like one, like one of the default places to, to go um, other than like a local grocery store. <clears throat> this one's called You Outed Amy Adams. Hey, Mark, do you realize during the Robbie interview you outed Amy Adams as the A-lister you and Patricia spoke with? Keep up the flat work. Uh, Bo K and Garter, your wedding photographer. I, no, no, I didn't out Amy Adams at all. Uh, in fact, it's one of the, the lines in the book that I'm writing and one of the reasons why I mentioned it on Robbie's show. And that is, no, no, Amy, Amy Adams is not the A-lister who's in support of Flat Earth. Actually, she hates Flat Earth. And that's the fact that was the line when I put right underneath her name in the book, which I says, Amy Adams hates Flat Earth. She does. And I know this from the A-lister because she was in a room full of A-listers who uh, heard her say that, that she hates it because she has a family member that's in it moving on this one's called flat earth question please hi mark just a quick question but firstly i love the great work you do and your professionalism with your questions and your answers and great audio 
that it's clear and easy to listen to. Thank you. I've gone through a lot of different microphones, and this one I am speaking. The the trick is you got you got to have a microphone that you're you're talking really really close to. You can't really do it from a distance. Okay, my question is this, and I think it may have been asked more recently. It was the guy who spelt surely wrong. <laughs> But as you read the question out, I could see what he was getting at. I think he was asking, we are told the sunlight takes 8.2 seconds to reach Earth. But if the sun is within the dome and much closer and smaller, it would take a lot less time. Indeed, seconds rather than minutes. Yeah, if, if that. In fact, not even a second. And I think he was referring to the light rays hitting their face from the time of first spotting the sun appearing over the horizon. Or... He could have been referring to the heat from the sun that will travel a lot slower than light. Um, in my opinion, when you see the sun rise in the sky, you've seen the light, so it was instant, if you know what I mean. Thanks for taking the time to read this, and I hope you, uh, to see you later this year in the UK. Uh, and that's from West Coast Paranormal. Yeah, um, I don't know what this guy's getting at. I mean, if yeah, if the sun is 93 million miles away, then it would take 8.2 seconds to get here. But the sun is the, the light, light is always instant. So I, I just don't know where he's getting the eight seconds to I, how he can compare an object that is really, really close with an object really, really far uh, with the speed of light. Not that I'm a big believer of the speed of light anyway, and if anyone wants to look into that more, look into something uh, in, in quantum mechanics, the, uh, the instant polarity change of, uh, of molecules. And that is, and they, they, scientists have already found this, where they, the, it's instant, it's absolutely instant over any distance. The, the, the polarity spin, uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but the, the, sp the polarity spin between molecules, if one spins one way, then the other one instantly spins over any distance. So that pretty much blows the speed of light out of the water, which means that light isn't what we think it is. But we'll get into more of that later. Uh, this one's called Authentic Intent Josh Gets a Write-Up in the City Pages. Yeah, you see, I don't think this was Josh. I don't know why everyone says this was Uber Josh. They were, they were telling me this. Flat Earther uses, it's a headline in a newspaper. Flat Earther uses Minneapolis uh, BDE Maka Ska to tackle a great conspiracy. And that's in the City Pages. Um, it's a hit piece, of course, but not too bad. And Josh will take it on the chin anytime. Just thought I would pass this on. It's from Carolyn. Um, Carolyn... Jo Uber Josh is in Los Angeles. He's been uh, in Los Angeles for a long time, if not his entire life. So I don't know why the, the Minneapolis thing, why you thought it was Josh. I mean, it kind of looks like him. Kind of. And I love the fact that this guy's uh, set up a little card table in the middle of a park and was talking to anyone that will walk by about Flat Earth. That was really cool. Uh, let's see. This one's called New Space Movie Coming Out. Uh, it's called Ad Astra is an upcoming American science fiction film directed by James Gray, who co-wrote the screenplay with Ethan Gross. The film stars Brad Pitt, Tommy Lee Jones, Ruth Nega, Liv Tyler, and Donald Sutherland and involves an astronaut who must go out into space in search of his long lost father, whose experiment threatens the solar system. Yeah, it really looks like an interstellar clone. Looks a lot like an interstellar clone, and which is interesting because clones usually come out within a year of each other. And this was delayed somewhat, and I don't know why. This one's called Circumnavigation Anomalies. I think I already answered that one. Yep, that's from Rob on behalf of Paul on the Plane. Thanks for that. This one's called Watch K Rhino, Flat Versus Globe, number five on YouTube. Uh, this is the link to K Rhino's track. It's from James Goodson. He's one of our subject matter experts. And the song, it's on the real K Rhino. He's got 17,000 subscribers. And it's K R I N O. It's not K R H I N O, which was the animal. But it's still a cool name. And it's a good song. I like it. I, I already added it to my subject matter list. So thanks for that. This one's called Our Near Sun, Moon, and Stars. And do I want to read this one? Sure. This one's a little longer. It's called Our Near <clears throat> Sun, Moon, and Stars. 
Mark, greetings from Australia. Definitely not from down under. I discovered the big lie a year ago, starting, started looking for the curvature and found there is none. Now I see evidence almost daily highlighting the lies. We are fed regarding the world we live in. Have seen lots of your material on the internet. Congrats and thanks. You've mentioned receiving lots of info from the Christian community, so you should have. If the church had not been sedated by the enemy, Copernicus would not have been, or he would have been laughed out of town. As a bona fide Christian, I too would like to point you to the Bible. All English translations have been got at to a small degree, but the Bible is the maker's manual. And with guidance from the author, there are numberless treasures of truth to be found, including details of what the creator created to be our dwelling place. The major pur purchase... The major purpose of God in creating our world was to get himself a family. He created an abode for his prospective children, and those not, to live in. We who are his chosen are the apple of his eye. He lives in heaven above us to be close to us and watch over us as his master plan proceeds to its conclusion. The world that we live in today has a definite use-by date. Absolutely no need for trillions and zillions of outer space. The Bible is like no other book on earth. It's a country, by a country mile. As Chuck Missler put it, a message of extraterrestrial origin, portraying us as objects of an unseen warfare in which we are both the pawns and the prize. There's a spiritual war going on that has started before our heaven and earth began when God kicked Satan and his cronies out of God's heaven. The most effective weapon of warfare is deception. And God's son said, okay, it gets a little preachy after this. I about to say, after another paragraph, he says, okay, enough of, of the sermon. Okay, yeah, because I, I got to skip past this. I don't want to turn this into a Sunday thing. It's only Friday. Uh, let's see here. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, it's from Ron Cross. Yeah, thank you. The, the letter's a little, a little long. I, I appreciate everything you said here. And you you are quoting a lot of chapter and verse, which is fine. Uh, but remember, that's not, this is not necessarily the vehicle to do that. But thank you for the letter, and I will read the whole thing, I promise. Moving on. This one's called F.E. Clues Playlist. Mark, the first is a screenshot from subscribed. The other is from not subscribed. Interesting. The Flat Earth Clues doesn't seem the, the original one. It's missing one. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, you only see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 playlists. I'm sorry. If you are, I'm sorry. If you are subscribed, you see... You see 10, but if you're not subscribed, you see 11. The flatter, well, at least when he was logged in. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else, but people might want to look at this. And who knows? Um, but if you're not subscribed, it seems counterintuitive. You see the Flat Earth Clues playlist in my playlist. But, but once he was subscribed, he doesn't see it anymore. I don't know how to explain that. That's, that's really interesting. Huh. That's from Bill Duke. Thanks, Bill. I, I don't know what to make of that. This one's called Comments Disabled. Mark, several videos from past months show that their comments are disabled. Is this the new trend to stifle and censor our conversations? If any of you can find or move to a site other than YouTube, please make it known to the Flat Earth community. Not sure if one exists that isn't connected to Google, but perhaps someone will start one. Eh? Please reply when you have time. Thanks, Todd. Yeah, I mean, again, YouTube helped us for three years, solidly helped us. We were recommended in just about every capacity you could think of. They don't need to recommend us as much anymore. The documentary changed all that, and that was behind the curve. Once it made it to Netflix last year, at the end of last year, it went everywhere else. And so now Flat Earth is a campfire story. More than anything, it can be passed without the internet. And and because it's such an easy concept, remember, research flat earth, look into flat earth. Have you seen flat earth? There's such easy concepts to talk, at least bre uh, bring up to people and plant the seed that YouTube doesn't have to really try anymore. We're being helped. And and anyone that's been in the community for a while should, should know this by now. This one's called Flat Earth News Article. Hi, Mark. I just seen this on the Microsoft News Feed, uh, MSN. And that is, let's see, it's the article is called Flat Earthers and the Rise of Science Denial in America. Yep. Figured I sent it along, but I'm thinking you've already seen it. Keep it flat and keep it the great work. Cheers, Philip. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen articles like that. 
And the, I mean, again, the it's not going to hurt us in the end because every time you say, oh, flat earth is, is silly, flat earth is stupid. Every time you make a mainstream article about that, you're just shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. It's all you're doing. Uh, I, I don't know how to make it more clear than that. You know, from a distance, yeah, it looks like you're shooting, you know, a lot of activities happening. You're shooting those arrows. You're just adding fuel to the flames. That's all you're doing. Let's see. This one's called, I am the one that sent you the email venting about the new Star Wars exhibit. Mark, thanks for reading my email. I hope you had a chance to view it. However, my point of view, I understand, sounds a little extreme. You are even more wild, quiet. Is that a word? Q-U-I-E-L-E-D? And pragmatic as well as smart. <laughs> so you correctly take it with a grain of salt. You are correct. People only have the desire to be entertained and they don't want to face any reality regardless of the meaning of the consequences. I think if their god Elon uh -huh, will come clean one day and tell the maddening crows that SpaceX is fake... The people will exhale for a second and they will shout out in unison, it's okay, don't worry, but when is the new Tesla model you promised coming out? Yeah, good point. By the way, uh, is my own code for fake moon landing, after all, with the new Chinese-style social credit score coming soon to our own shores? No, 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 you, you can't implement it. In China, yeah, you can do it. There are a lot more... Um, complacent you know with with something like that if you guys don't know what the chinese style social credit score is you really should look up it's terrifying um in fact i don't know if uh, black mirror the series uh, the wonderful television series uh came up with that one off of of the chinese thing or not but they did uh, a version an episode based on that sorry uh, should be cautious to be monitored by big brother thanks for your good work and best wishes yeah the, the social credit score thing just can't I can't work in America there's too many competing because of the free markets and capitalism you there's too many competing uh, companies corp, giant corporations and social media Google being one of them that owns uh, the parent company is the parent company of this network uh, that that would have a stake in that so yeah probably probably not a great idea uh, this one's called meetup hello again Mark Sargent and I don't email a whole lot so i hope i'm doing this right by replying to our previous emails anyway if you have the time and would be so kind i was wondering if you could do another promotion for our upcoming flat earth meetup in east tennessee it'll be saturday june 22nd at 6 p.m at the golden corral in chattanooga tennessee the address is 1808 gun barrel road chattanooga Ch chattanooga Anyone who wants more information can contact Simon with text or call at 423-902-1591. Thanks again for all your help and for all you do in the truth community. I pray God's supernatural favor and blessing upon you. That's awfully nice. And yep, I made the promo for him and it is already up there. This one's called Flat Earth Court Case Ruling. Hey Mark, long time no talk. If you haven't already heard, this is, I believe, the first Flat Earth Court Ruling I've ever seen. I PDF'd the article from the Facebook link and sent it along here. was thinking you might be able to talk about it with Patricia on your show. Clint from Saskatoon. That's up in Canada. <coughs> and uh, new. No, we're not going to be talking about Patricia's show anytime soon because the secret show is on hold until Patricia figures out if she wants to keep talking about flat earth stuff because she's been getting hammered by the trolls. And, uh, you know, I might as well address this now. Um, if you hadn't noticed, she has hidden her Facebook channel, hidden her YouTube channel entirely. And she, in fact, I, I, she's not even answering or she, she may have even killed her Gmail account, which is, you know, the, the mysterious gmail.com. Cause I've heard that it's, I'm getting, people are getting bounce backs. So I, I can't confirm that though. Cause I haven't tried it myself. Or maybe she's blocking. I don't know. But the point is if you're a woman on the internet, some things never change and uh I, I, when the internet came out came out 20 something years ago uh it, it for whatever reason it's kind of like uh, men they they reach out and they take more chances with women you know as far as berating them and, and insulting them it's uh it's just awful I, men I don't know why they have not learned. They have not evolved and they should be completely retooled from the ground up when this place gets rebuilt. 
which is that you know like i put up i have literally put my phone number out there on the internet somewhere at all times i am not shy about it and and women ask me why why i put my phone number out there i go because i'm a guy because a woman would never even now if you're if you are somewhat attractive and or interesting and you're a woman you put your phone number out on the internet you will get calls in the middle of the night absolutely just get calls from from random guys and, and they don't even have to be drunk they will call you and uh but at the same time if you're a guy you're a good looking guy you're not gonna get calls you won't you you will not get them guys do not have the same attitude or, or women don't have the same that same attitude so anyway the where am i getting at here the point is is that people lashed out at patricia for three different reasons um uh, one, because she was a woman, two, because she's very attractive, and of course, three, because she's Jewish. And, and, and you know, some people are like, she's Jewish? It's like, yeah, fine, because her name isn't, instead of Steer, it isn't like Steinberg or something like that. If it was, oh God, she'd catch even more hell. Even even worse if her name was, was obviously Jewish. So... I, in, and, and she's into flat earth. You combine those first three things. I mean, even without flat earth, people would call her up if, if she had her phone number out there. And then she was doxxed and people knew where she was, you know, where she was and where she lived in Houston. And, uh, you know, deliveries were sent to her house and solicitations and it was it was not fun. And for anything, sorry, I'm, I'm going to go off on a quick little rant here. With anything in life, most people, they want it to be more positive than negative. Whatever you're doing in life, whatever hobby, whatever mission you have in life, it, it's got you, it's a quality of life thing. And that is, do the positives outweigh the negatives? And for her, for a, a while now, it has not been. Even when the documentary came out, yeah, there were some positive things there. It was very, very cool. And she got to go to some conferences and everything's great. But the trolls just will not stop. Oh, they just, they... She's got a giant target on her chest and they will not stop. And, uh, I don't blame her for, for pulling back. I don't, uh, and if you want, you want the, um, uh, the biggest, the, the biggest thing in this would be Eric to And that was, he made a video, go, go to his channel. It's up there. Now he made another rap video, another one against her and other people in the community. I think I'm in there at least half a dozen times where he's just making these rap lyrics and he hates everybody. He endorses nobody in the flat earth community. He hates everybody. He, he, and it's all jealousy. That's all it is. He, 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 it's, it's a huge ego thing. It's like, I created flat earth. I created like, really? Cause Matt Boylan said the same thing. And then Paul Michael Bales said the same thing before you got into it. So, and anyway, Patricia, you know, as, as women take it harder than men, they always do. And I'm not bulletproof by any means. I don't look at the comment sections. And if somebody even sends me a troll video, 99 times out of hundred, I won't even watch it. So there you go. So anyway, Clint, <laughs> that's a long answer to, uh, yeah, the Facebook, uh, the ruling on Facebook, the flat earth court case. Don't worry. There's going to be more and more of those coming down the pipe and, uh, this thing's going to be getting bigger and weirder and don't worry about Patricia. She's just fine. She, you know, she, she had a, a, she, a life that most people would consider envious outside of flat earth. And, uh, if that's what she wants to go back to and do that for a while, Hey, more power to her. You know, everyone's got to go through their days and, and be able to get up in the morning and say, okay, you know, it's going to be a good day. And she can say that right now. And if she comes back to the community and, and, and does some active things, wonderful. I'm sure she'll be embraced. And if she stays out of it, we'll, we will uh, be at a loss for it. But at the same time, she's, you know, a lot of her stuff is out there. <laughs> For better or for worse, in her case, she's out. She's on the internet permanently now, especially with the the documentary. Uh, her her internet footprint when it comes to flat Earth is out there forever. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how things happen. Moving on, this one's called Flat Earth Map. Hi, Mark. I was listening to you and Karen last night, and y'all vanished, never to be heard from again. Yeah, TFR um, went belly up. <laughs> In, on their server during my broadcast it had to be rebooted and i don't know what happened i mean it's it's fine now but of course there's murphy's law uh, we're we're barely through the first section and it's like oh we're not going to broadcast anymore e even though we recorded well we recorded at least half the show and then uh, after it doesn't really matter 
Uh, let's see, that TFR thingy must be complicated or y'all got hacked. I don't know, maybe a little both. Who knows? I'm sure you'll figure it out. Sorry to hear about Patricia, but I don't blame her. She gets way too much crap for being so wonderful. Deleting her comments was a good idea. I finally got the Pontius version Flat Earth map done. It has the Gleason's proportions with all the nice colors of the map I've been using. I painted the ancient Mercator of the North Pole in the center and some gates or passageways in the ice wall for fun and thought I'll be using this map from now on in my new logo too. What do you think? Pass it on, Chris Pontius. Yep, it's cool. I like it. The Chris Pontius map. Very, very cool. Very artistic. Chris Pontius is a great guy. Also in the documentary. And he got off he got off easy in, in that documentary. They uh, they didn't hit him nearly as hard. Why? Why would they? He doesn't he doesn't do debates. He's he's an artist. He just makes flatter 3D models. And yeah, maybe one day if he debates it and, and talks it about it with the people, maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll get a chance to uh, to deal with the same stuff. But out of everybody in that documentary, he got off scot free. This one's called Printed Proof of Firmament. Let's see here. This has no content. It's from the Lincoln Library of Essential Information. Let's see. Dr. Heaviside in England later proved that the Hurtison waves were reflected by a layer of ionized atoms produced about 50 to 100 miles above the Earth's surface by ultraviolet rays from the sun. The existence of this celestial mirror, the so-called ionosphere, makes possible long-distance communications by radio. The Lincoln Library of Essential Information. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Like it. I like how he worded it anyway. This one's called Ghost Moon Discovered Around Orbiting the Earth. You know, I didn't actually click on this, but I am... So it's on sciencepost.org. Ghost moon discovered around orbiting the Earth. Astronomers have discovered two ghost moons around the Earth. Could have been three around the Earth. Earth could have been three moons. Astronomers' discovery of ghost moons is giving remarkable understanding about the Earth and the moon. What? Researchers say there are actually clouds of dust circulating in orbit around our planet. Researchers have been saying for decades the existence of such phenomena is possible, as a team of Hungarian physicists from a private observatory have certainly provided proof. Uh, let's see, these ghost moons gravitate approximately 400,000 kilometers from the Earth, and they are observed for the first time in 1961. What? The images were, were they recorded showing a polarizing... Why aren't people talking about this? Uh, let's see. These mysterious clouds of dust. Mysterious clouds of dust. Um, uh, does the Earth really have three moons? What do you need to know about these moons? But these moons are made out of dust? Oh, you guys are killing me. They're clouds. They're very, they're two of the most difficult objects to see. They are close to the Earth as the moon. They are largely ignored by astronomers. How, largely? How about almost entirely? It is intrigued to confirm that our planet has dusty pseudo-satellites in orbit along our lunar neighbor. And the discovery is some importance in future space exploration. Indeed, some of these missions to place satellites at Lagrange points, these positions of space where gravity fields, blah, blah, blah. And nobody, nobody's talked about this until now. These, and of course, there's some, some painted images by NASA, which is also great. Oh, you know what? I'm stealing that one. Save that picture. Oh, that's awesome. Courtesy of NASA. That is a painted image by NASA. I love it. Let's see. Royal Astron Astronomical Society. Man, this is a big article. Okay, we're done. We're done. But thank you for that. That's from Duke. All right, moving on. This one's called Pictures from the SR-71 Blackbird. Blackbird. Some from 90,000 feet up. Yep. There's a YouTube link to that. You can see that anytime. Mark, I recently discovered your videos and my mind has been blown. Thank you for taking a stand and being a voice about the flat earth. I had no idea and still struggle trying to wrap my mind around the fact that the earth is flat. I watched the video today linked above from Brian Schull, S-H-U-L, SR-71 pilot who retired with the Blackbird in 1990. He is a motivational speaker and shows a lot of pictures that he personally took with the traditional 35 millimeter lens camera. The thing that stood out to me here is that there's no curve in any of his, his images. This video has not been viewed a lot and was published in 2015. I appreciate you. And that's from John. You know what? I am saving that one. 
off to the side. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, now I gotta I gotta respond to Adrian out in the U in the New Zealand. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Mark. Hope you were well. Uh, campaign we are casting for. It's, it's an Australian thing. We'll see how that goes. This one's called Chip Baker. A little heavy. Hey, Mark. A thumb drive should arrive next week with all my songs. Plenty of extra space. And he sent me a cool song. Thanks for that, Chip. Put that in my to-do pile. Sorry. I'm just going through general emails now. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, how can there be one edge only? I'm Antarctica. What? Shouldn't there be an edge around the entire whole rim? Yes, you can. Therefore, you can't go in an outward direction. Maybe there is no edge and it's infinite. Who knows? That's from Vanessa. Okay. Yes, I I agree, I guess. Yeah, but she's but yeah, she's got it, I think, pretty much. Antarctica go, goes around the entire outside. This one's called Climate Change Concerns. Hi, Mark. I was thinking about all the hassle and concerns about CO2 output, global warming, etc. When most of the people believe in the globe model, apparently, flying through space at about 60,000 miles in an hour and spinning 1,000 miles an hour, I don't see why that would be a problem then because however possible could all the pollution CO2 gases could stick to the globe. Yeah, yeah. Let these smart scientists explain why it won't all blow away. Thanks, keep it flat, bro. All the best, Peter. Yeah, it's one of my, one of my five big points, which is gravity versus the vacuum of space. Uh, and that is, and I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the simple version for you guys. Let's say there's a second story to the building you're in right now, and you turn that into a vacuum chamber, and there's a big cork in the ceiling, and you pop it. What do you think is going to happen? All the air is going to uh, equalize. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be instant. It's going to be extremely violent, and you're probably going to black out and or die. And you say, okay, what's my point? My point is, why didn't gravity keep all the air, all the atmosphere in your room right now instead of flooding straight up into that vacuum chamber? And they say, well, because the vacuum was too strong for it. I'm going, yeah, that's my point. My point is you're a tiny little globe covered with a wisp of smoke in a massive vacuum chamber. And yet you're saying that the massive vacuum of that chamber doesn't rip all the atmosphere off that little globe. How does it do it? And they say, well, it's, it's gravity. It's got to be gravity. And, and seriously, the scientists get stuck in a loop because they say, well, it has to be gravity. Otherwise, we'd be dead. It has to be gravity. I'm going, unless it's an enclosed system. I mean, they, they get so stuck in the gravity thing. They say, what? Well, they, they don't even look at an enclosed system. I go, an enclosed system, enclosed pressurized system, like a snow globe, makes way more sense. And yet, yeah. Moving on. We'll do a few more. This one's called Earth is an Ancient Quarry. Mark, what are your th thoughts on the Earth being an ancient quarry? Grand Canyon, for example. How does that theory work on the Flat Earth model? Thanks, Chris Jacobs. I suppose. I mean, the Grand, Grand Canyon actually is a, is a fascinating look if you want to go into the, the mysterious stuff about the Grand Canyon uh, and how it looks like it was formed by giant light bolts of lightning, which is really not by natural erosion, which may be true. I don't know. And then there's weird caves filled with, you know, that had artifacts from previous civilizations or civilizations that shouldn't have been there. Very interesting. I mean, who knows what the terraforming that went on between the civilizations? Because remember, our civilization history only goes back unbroken about 5,000 years. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of time. Uh, and uh, we're not the first people to rent this apartment. This one's called My Thoughts. Hi, Mark. I saw an interview you did. I think it was in Canada. Hmm. Okay. You did a debate with a prophet of the religion known as science and you said a trigger word that snapped the female host out of her programming and you probably didn't notice let me explain okay first of all i i know which one you're talking about no this was an australian show down in um <clears throat> sydney where uh it was uh, a bunch of people on that were sitting kind of like a morning today show type thing and they brought in an astrophysicist from an american one from uh from the antarctic down there which was interesting 
and I they piped me in through Skype. Anyway, sorry. You two talked about if satellites are real. Yeah, me and the guy, the, the other American. Go figure. Well, the scientists said we could have the internet because of satellites, and you quickly responded by asking the internet, you mean that is from fiber optic cables in the ocean? Yeah, uh, almost 99% of the bandwidth that we go through out there is from fiber optics in the ocean. It's way more efficient, way easier to do, uh, and, and cost effective than, than trying. I mean, bandwidth from satellites? Come on. No. Um, the lady host made a group jump in her seat or made a small jump in her seat. She knew that was absolutely true for a, So for a second, she was able to think and question what, uh, what she was told that response triggered something in her and she looked dazed and kind of scared after you said that I think she had a red pill from the matrix moment. She was able to see down the rabbit hole. You should watch that interview and you will see that bothered that lady. Lastly, it always amazes me that when you speak about flat earth, about flat earth, people always want to ask you for proof, yet they never ask for proof of the things they have been told from a child to adulthood. Any new information that contradicts what they have been told, they fight against. Thanks, Mark. Nothing is more dangerous than telling people to look for the truth and do your own research. Yep, absolutely right. This one's called Patricia. Hey, Mark, hope you are doing well. As you may know, it has come to my attention that Patricia Steer has deleted all forms of social media. Any idea what's going on and is she okay? Is there a way we can reach her? Best wishes from just some guy in Europe in Amsterdam and his name's Jerome. Um, I don't know if there's a way to reach her right now because, I mean, I have a way of reaching her, but it's not through regular emails, through Skype, and I don't think she's, I don't think she's accepting any social requests right now. You gotta remember, after the documentary, it was kind of weird for her because she was getting a huge amount of social requests, and unless she knows them, I mean, she was kind of cherry picking the ones that, you know, that met her standards, I guess. Um, or maybe she knew him or maybe they're friends of friends. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, she's, she's tough to get a hold of right now. She has officially gone dark. So not much she can do. If you, you want to send uh, best wishes to her, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you want, you can email me. If anyone wants to send a nice letter to her, send them to me and I'll, I'll make sure she hears it or gets it one, one way or the other, but hold, getting a hold of her directly going to be a tall order. At, at this stage because she is does not want to deal with the trolls at all this one's called the ball is dead music video hi mark just a quick email in hopes that you will listen to my new flat earth song and maybe even promote it for me you can mirror it if you uh like or just put it on the music playlist or just ignore it. that's fine too i'd love for you to hear it and as many people as possible i'm not monetized and never will be i'm not looking for subs or money just want more people to hear it i have a f couple more songs just waiting to be recorded too stay tuned my first music video and i you know what i'm gonna click on it and tell you what it is before i finish up this thing it is called the ball is dead flat earth music video nights night of the round table i'm gonna give it a thumbs up i'm gonna give it a subscribe and there's some people already commenting including Phuket word so you know what i'm gonna check that out i'm gonna i'm gonna mirror it so i'm gonna put that in my to-do pile as well let's end on this one this one's called flat earth meetup ch interesting hi mark next week i will have the first meeting of the first flat earth meetup in switzerland how do I go about getting your support to post one of your meetup announcement videos? I assume you need the date, location, and my contact details, perhaps also some images of Switzerland, or do you normally find the images yourself to ensure no copyright infringement? Let me know what else you need. Thanks in advance and keep up the great work. Many thanks, Randy. Yep, whatever you said there. I Just send me your, if you want to do a meetup, uh, I, as long as I can. I get, get, Remember, it's I'm getting busier and busier and busier, so eventually I won't be doing as many meetup promo videos. Uh, but I'll... I'll as long as I can, I, I'll try. If I have time, I have free time. I have no excuse. So it was, it was the same. If you have time to lean, you have time to clean. I always hated that saying. All right. Anyway, we're going to end on that one. So thanks for everybody that got a hold of me. Remember, you can send your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.